Hi everybody, it's me, Mike Celestino from LaughingPlace.com, and I got another one of these huge boxes from our friends at Hasbro. It's got Mando Mania logo on it. It's got the Mandalorian himself, Din Jaren, Baby Grogu, Bo Katan Kreese, Paz Vizsla, the Armorer. Amazing artwork on this box, and it's pretty big, so I'm pretty excited to open it up and find out what's inside. Let's check it out, shall we? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open up this box from Hasbro and Lucasfilm for Mando Mania, which is the big merchandising push in conjunction with Season 3 of The Mandalorian. And it's a nice big box full of Mandalorian goodies. Let's get rid of this cardboard here. Wow. Look how much fun stuff is in here. First of all, we've got... Wild Raiden Grogu, and this looks like it's an animatronic Grogu. He's got his little pram that he's riding around in. He makes all sorts of, looks like different uh, facial expressions, or his head can tilt in different ways. Two ways to play. You can unlock the pram for sound effects, tap the head to activate sound and movement combos. We're going to take a look at that a bit later. We'll open them up and uh, see what it does. Then we've got these... Uh, this is the Bounty Collection, there we go, Bounty Collection of Grogu uh, static figures. There's uh, five, let's see, there's five series. This is the fifth series of the Bounty Collection, and it looks like we've got uh, most, if not all, of these in this box. There's uh, six total, looks like we got four of them, so um, I'm going to start opening these up as we take them out of the box. Let's see if I can pop this open pretty easily. Okay, this is our first example of the Bounty Collection from Hasbro, this box. This is uh, Grogu holding the Darksaber hilt. Very nice, very cute. We haven't actually seen Grogu hold the Darksaber in the show yet, though he has been around the dark Darksaber. There was that scene where Moff Gideon was showing him the Darksaber, but Grogu has not actually held the hilt, but still a very cute and cool idea there for us to see Grogu with the dark saber hilt. Let's move on to our next of the bounty collection, which looks like it's going to be Grogu holding the Mandalor, Mar excuse me, the uh, Beskar ingot. So this is the Beskar ingot from season one that the Mandalorian gets paid with by the client, played by Werner Herzog. It's got the little imperial insignia pressed into the metal there. It is uh, embossed there in the plastic of that metal, and he's kind of chewing on that Beskar ingot. Very nice, very cute uh, little Grogu figure. The third one looks like it's going to be, let's see, Grogu with, what has he got there? Oh, I, I see. It is the, uh, the head of a dark trooper. So let's open this up. This one is Grogu with a dark trooper head. Those those evil looking droids that the Mandalorian and Luke Skywalker fight in the season two finale of the Mandalorian. And he's oh Grogu is tugging on some of the wiring underneath the dark trooper helmet. That's a very fun one and another very cute example of the Bounty Collection. This one here, it looks like Grogu is just kind of striking a pose. But let's see when we take him out of the box what this looks like. Yep, it's just Grogu kind of, uh, almost kind of dabbing, <laughs> I would say. Or doing some kind of dance move. I don't remember if anyone in the comments wants to say, you know, make a connection to any specific moment from the show. I don't remember him actually striking this exact pose in The Mandalorian or in the Book of Boba Fett, but maybe I'm just, maybe it's just not coming to me at the moment. It's still a very cute looking pose for a very cute uh, figure from the Bounty Collection and Grogu. This is just telling us about how, yes, Hasbro did send this over to us to check out for free and to share with you guys. Um, and it's just about, uh, The Mandalorian, and Mando Mania is the title, is the name of this 
merchandise campaign. So let's continue here. This is a, let's see, this is called Mandalorian the Child Lightsaber Squad Lightsaber. So this would be the youngest of Hasbro's lightsaber toys that are out there. It's for ages four and up. And it extends to a pretty decent length. That's about the length of, uh, you know, real, you know, old Yodas. Not baby Yodas, but old Yodas lightsaber that we saw in the prequels and in the Book of Boba Fett. But it does have, I believe that's supposed to be Grogu's head. Not, uh, not Yoda. Yeah, because it is the child. So this is Grogu's head. And it's got a green lightsaber blade. Even though Grogu doesn't have his own lightsaber yet that we've seen in The Mandalorian. This is a fun example of a lightsaber toy. It doesn't uh, light up or, or make noise or anything. It's just for kids to bang around with, I believe. So that's fun. Uh, that's called the Lightsaber Squad Grogu. Not Grogu, but the Child Lightsaber. Let's see, what else is a simple thing to look at here? Okay, there's a couple more of these Bounty Collection figures, these Grogu static figures. Let's see. What's this one? Oh, this is Grogu with a Tuka or a Loth cat. I think this would be considered a Tuka. We did see a Tuka in a couple episodes of The Mandalorian so far, so this makes sense. That would be something that little Grogu would interact with, and it's curling up against him. It's kind of rubbing, probably purring, rubbing up against little Grogu. So that's very cute and fun. We like cats here in my apartment, so um, we're a fan. We're going to be a fan of this figure in particular, I think. I like that quite a bit. Again, very cute. And let's see. The, the sixth and final of the Bounty Collection toys that are in this Mando Mania box is going to be... Oh, he is levitating... That little knob that he loves so much looks like he's uh, either drawing it to him or pushing it away from him. Probably drawing it to him because he does love to hold that thing. But there's Grogu with his little metal knob or the, the little metal ball. It's attached via a transparent little plastic tube. But yeah, it just makes, makes it look like he's holding it and levitating it. There we go. Okay, and then speaking of more Mandalorian, it's all going to be Mandalorian stuff, but this is the Star Wars The Mandalorian uh, electronic mask, which is the front half of Din Djarin's helmet. Let's see, this is, uh, looks like it has different sounds it can make. I'm a Mandalorian. This is the way. I like those odds. You press the button on the helmet. In addition to phrases, it sounds like there's uh, sound effects. I'm a Mandalorian. This is the way. And it does actually sound quite a bit like Pedro Pascal's voice. Let's open that up in a bit. We'll take a look at uh, what it looks like outside of the box. And then we've also got from the Book of Boba Fett. Okay, so not from the Mandalorian this time. This is Star Wars The Book of Boba Fett. It is Boba Fett's electronic mask and this one says uh i want my armor back <laughs> lower your shields uh prepare for boarding is another phrase looks like the the range finder comes down folds up and down and then he has things you know we're gonna press this button here and find out what he says So it sounds uh, just like Timura Morrison. I'm guessing they may have just taken those sounds right from the show and put them into this uh, mask or helmet. We will be opening that up as well as we go through the rest of this stuff. Oops, I dropped one of the Grogu toys. Let's see what else we have in here. Um, two of the lightsaber forge lightsabers. We've taken a look 
at these before. So this is the Mace Windu one, and this is the Dark Saber one. These are mix and matchable, so you can combine them in a bunch of different ways. I actually just did a big reveal for the new Ahsoka Tano one. Um, we're going to open these up in a bit and try and mix and match them together. Then we've got, oh boy, this is like a 12-inch The Mandalorian action figure. Hmm, does he, yeah, he has uh, articulation. He's got the jet pack. He's got the blaster. He's got little Grogu. Does Grogu come out? Uh, it looks like he might. Yeah, yeah. So you can see uh, on the box here, Grogu can come in and out of the pouch. There's phrases. That's from uh, the tragedy episode. Wherever I go, he goes. So let's see. Um, there's 15 sounds and phrases. I am the Mandalorian. This is the way. Uh, interactive Grogu and Jetpack. Very cool looking. Larger scale toy than the type of stuff that I usually collect. So this would be for somewhat younger kids. Yeah, this is for ages four and up. Um, and we'll open that up in a bit later on in the video as well. Let's see what else is in here. There is... The Mandalorian Navarro Cantina set. I have to admit, I've already bought this for myself. I have it in the other room, still in the box. So um, I haven't opened it yet, but we will open this up and check it out later on. But boy, this is a really cool uh, play set for the three and three quarter inch scale. Action figures actually includes the Imperial Death Trooper figure from Navarro. And then you can use your uh, separately, you know, sold separately Mando and Grogu and IG-11 figures in this very, very neat Navarro Cantina set. As you know, in the show, it's been turned into a school, but uh, that's from season one. The, the, the Cantina is from season one of The Mandalorian. And then also in the three and three quarter inch scale, we've got Paz Vizsla, the heavy Mandalorian, voiced by Jon Favreau in the series and you know what let's just open him up because this is going to be a quick one um i can get in the box here okay so there's the heavy mando also known as paz vizsla who is a descendant of tar vizsla the first mandalorian to become a jedi and pre vizsla who is the john favreau character that he voiced in the clone wars cartoon and this is what he looks like in the three and three quarter inch vintage collection scale. Okay, so he's got his backpack with his very heavy weapon. This just goes right into a peg on the back there. And here's the weapon itself that attaches to this uh, tube or chain, I believe. And it, I think that's going to plug right in there. Okay. I got it. Yep. And then he can hold the weapon in his hand like so. And he can visit. We'll have him visit the uh, Navarro Cantina uh, later on as well, even though he doesn't actually go in there in the series. But we can make that happen for him. I think he wants to visit the Cantina. There's a look at the back side of Paz Vizsla. The heavy Mando. By the way, there's also some attachments for the flamethrower and the gun. We'll check those out in a bit as well. I'm going to put them aside for now. And then also on the action figure side, we've got the Mandalorian himself, uh, Din Djarin. I've already got this figure, so I'm not going to open this. I think what I'm going to do... Is I'm going to keep this one in the box for display, maybe hang it on the wall, and I'll just show you what he looks like outside of the box. But yeah, this is the exact figure that's in here. This is the Mandalorian in his Season 1 outfit after he gets the jetpack and the um, pauldron with the uh, mudhorn signet on it. So 
end of season one into the beginning of season two, Din Djarin, before his ship gets blown up, because also I think the pulse rifle gets blown up in the ship as well. But I just wanted to show you again what this figure looks like outside of the box. There you have it. And then also on the action figure side, it's the Dark Trooper from The Mandalorian. Let's open this guy up right now. This is the Black Series, by the way, the six inch scale of Star Wars action figures from Hasbro. I am a big fan of this series. I collect them and sometimes Hasbro sends them to me to show them to you guys as well. So, uh, again, full disclosure, I have also bought a Dark Trooper for myself, but this is one of those figures where it could kind of be a troop builder, right? You can't ever have too many Dark Troopers. How many does Luke fight in that episode? Like a dozen at least, I would say. So now I have two, that's awesome. No complaints here. Uh, let's um, take out his blaster rifle. Let's see, what are these now? Well, there's some flames for his flamethrowers. And two little black pieces. Oh, these are, okay, so these are alternate hands. You can swap out his hands, because if you remember in that episode, in uh, the season two finale of The Mandalorian, it's called The Rescue, there's a point where the dark troopers are trying to get into the bridge of Moff Gideon's light cruiser, and they're punching, they're just punching on the door, because they, these guys have such uh, so much power that they can just punch right through the metal. But basically, you can switch out these hands from a, a grasping hand, pop, pops right off. And then, which one is the left hand? This one will pop right on to replace that. There we go. Now he's got a punching hand, so one hand can hold the blaster rifle. Almost kind of like a blaster shotgun, I would say, actually, if such a thing exists. And one hand has the fist. But yeah, wow, what a cool figure of the Dark Trooper from The Mandalorian, originally from the Dark Forces video game that I grew up on. Um, yeah, love this toy. Great looking figure from the Black Series. Okay, so it looks like there's at least a couple more items in here. Let's take a look at this one, which is one of the bigger ones, and it is the Black Series Bo-Katan Kree's helmet. Electronic helmet. I've seen this for sale at Disneyland and always kind of had my eye on it. I don't think I'm the right type to wear the, the Bo-Katan helmet, but it is super, super cool, and I'm very glad to have it, to display it and check it out, because it is going to be electronic and, and make some noises here. Let's see, it says there's got LED lights, it's got flip-down illuminated HUD or, or heads-up display. It's realistically detailed, entertainment-inspired reproduction of the iconic Bo-Katan Kreese helmet. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be a cool one. We're going to open this up in a minute as well. But first I want to show you what I believe to be the final item in the box, because this is uh, just a space holder here. Yeah, put that aside. But wow. This is pretty sweet, you guys. I am pretty excited about this one. This is the Star Wars The Black Series Force Effects Elite Mandalorian Darksaber. And I didn't even have to fight anybody to have this come into my possession because uh, Hasbro was cool enough to send this to me to check it out. There's Moff Gideon wielding the Darksaber on the box. This looks super, super cool. Let's read uh, some of the features here on the back. The Mandalorian Darksaber Force Effects Elite Lightsaber. Combining advanced LEDs and amplified sound technology. The Force Effects Elite Lightsaber is the most authentic Force Effects Lightsaber yet. 
progressive ignition, bright white LED blade, advanced LEDs, authentic dark saber sound effects, removable blade, blaster deflect effect, battle clash effect, molten blade tip FX, and real metal hilt. Look how cool that's going to look on display with the display stand and everything. I am super giddy. No pun intended on Moff Gideon's name, but I am super giddy to have the Dark Saber Force Effects Elite lightsaber. We're going to check this out in a minute as well. So let's, I'm going to clear the table of this box and just put all the stuff we still need to open out here and then we'll start going through it one by one. Here we go. Okay, so down here in the bottom, I've got everything that we've looked at already. The uh, Bounty Collection, six different Grogu static figures. And then you've got the Black Series, uh, Dark Trooper, and the Vintage Collection, uh, Paz Vizsla, all very cool. I remembered that I have already uh, opened and played with and presented these uh, lightsaber forge lightsabers, including the Mace Windu one and the Dark Saber one, back in September when I did um, an unboxing for Choose Your Destiny, which I think was tied in with the Obi Wan Kenobi series. So you can go back and watch that video. We'll link it in the comments or in the description of this video. Uh, so I'm not going to bother with those, but we will go through everything else. I'm going to grab my scissors and we'll start opening all this stuff up. Okay, so I'll put the Lightsaber Forge Saber is aside, and I'll put the Mandalorian Black Series figure aside because those are going to be uh, kept in the box or given away. I might give away these Lightsaber Forges at Star Wars Celebration this year since I, I'll be there in a couple weeks. Let's see. I think we should start with actually this Mandalorian and Grogu 12-inch figure set. So I'm going to pop this open. I'll... Uh, cut the bindings here that are holding them in the packaging. Oops. I don't want to tear off his head. Let's see. There's another one here. Yeah. Okay. Taking the whole inner box out of the exterior box and I'm just going to cut these bindings off. Easier said than done. Okay. Okay, got the jet pack or the rising phoenix as they call it. Let's see. The blaster. Okay. Everybody is out. Terrific. <laughs> this is the way. And Grogu chimes in there as well. The blaster can fit in the holster. One of my favorite action figure accessories is always the working holster. Let's see, how does Grogu come out? I'm sure there were instructions in the box. Oh! <laughs> so you actually have to unscrew Grogu from the bottom to take him out and you throw the screw away. So I'm going to grab my screwdriver and we'll take care of that. Okay, so I unscrewed Grogu from the bottom of the satchel there and he just pops up. <laughs> so he actually uh, didn't... Din Djarin will actually respond to you taking Grogu out or putting him back in. So I think he was just attached with a screw just to prevent people from grabbing Grogu and walking away with him in the store. Um, Din's helmet does tilt and rotate all around. So that's cool. Let's see. Put him back in here. Time's up, kid. We gotta get out of here. That's fun. And then we'll put his blaster in his hand. There we go. And we'll put the Rising Phoenix or the jetpack on his back. And there it is, your complete Din Djarin and Grogu. It's kind of a 12 inch toy for ages four and up. I think this is pretty neat and it's going to look 
nice even on my shelf. Not that I don't already have a ton of Mandalorian stuff, but I'm happy to have more. There's the back side of Din Djarin. There's the side, and there's the front. And let me give you a close-up look at Lil Grogu here. But you've seen this kid before all over the place. Okay, next we're going to do Wild Riding Grogu. Let's tear this apart here. Still talking over there. So there is Grogu's little pram. That's what that looks like. And then got Grogu himself. Oh, this is the top of the pram, the cover that swings down. That's what that looks like. And there's a plastic stand, an instruction booklet. And I just got to cut Grogu out of the packaging here, but I'll just take a second to do that. And there he is. I got him loose of his Packaging, I do like that his little collar is fabric. It's nice, soft fabric, although everything, every other part of him is plastic. His head's kind of a rubbery plastic. His body is a harder plastic, and his hands are the same rubbery plastic as his head. But his fabric collar is nice and soft and fuzzy. And then he will sit in the pram. Let's see. It's going to sit like this. Okay. I'll attach the top of the buggy there. And Grogu can sit on this stand. Uh, definitely looks nice like that. Let's see if it's going to do anything else. Do not hold by the ears is the first to rule. And do not feed after midnight. That's weird. Um, let's see. Uh, he needs some batteries. And then he does a bunch of different stuff. So let's get some batteries inside Grogu and see if we can figure out what he does. Okay, I've got the batteries in little Grogu right here, and there's a variety of things you can do with him to make him move his head and make noises. First of all, I'm going to tap him on his head. So he kind of looks around and makes little baby noises. Yep. Thanks, Grogu. And then I'm going to tap him twice this time. Tap him three times. Oh, that's his, like, force-using noise. Then you can hang him upside down. That's one of the things it's recommended to do. Yeah, mostly just a variety of head movements and noises, and he can sit in his little hover pram like this. Oh, I see. When you plug him in to the pram, oh, it also makes a cool noise. I had the top of the pram in backwards, but let's uh, sit him in here again.
anyway, that's Wild Riding Grogu, a fun toy for kids who like Grogu, and uh, it's going to look fun on my shelf, too. Uh, pretty happy about that one. Next, we're going to dive into these masks, these electronic masks. The first one is for Din Djarin. Got to cut this out, too. Okay, I uh, cut the helmet or the mask out of the packaging there. This isn't going to fit on my head by any stretch. It is for a younger person's head, a much smaller person's head than I am. But it does look like the front half of Din Djarin's mask, and it does make some cool sounds. I'm a Mandalorian. Uh, yeah, it's just that one button, I think. I like those odds. And you can see how the elastic stretches back there. It's got this little soft rubber for the to protect the forehead a little bit. Some more sounds happening there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I think kids will get a kick out of that to wear around the house or wear for Halloween. We've also got the Book of Boba Fett, Boba Fett mask. So I'm going to open that up in the same way. Okay, I've got the Boba Fett mask out of the package. He's also got, of course, the uh, rangefinder here that's just going to pop up, pop in to these two holes right there on the side. So there is a little bit more to the Boba Fett helmet because he does have the rangefinder, and that just comes down like that and back up like that. Let's see. Not much to see in the rangefinder. Just a little, like, fake black screen in there that you can see. And then let's listen to his sounds. Cool, so a nice uh, variety of sounds there. Same elastic band, same, oh. Yeah, it looks like you do get a sound when you put on the helmet. Um, but yeah, nice uh, <laughs> front half of the Boba Fett helmet. It's the Boba Fett uh, electronic mask. I think next, to continue with our run of helmets, I'm going to open up the uh, Bo-Katan Kreese helmet. Okay, so I've got the box open here. Let's pull the helmet out. Now this one, being from the Black Series, is going to be a little bit nicer, a little bit more detail, a bit more expensive as well, I'm sure. Yeah, I can also, I can already feel it's got quite a bit more heft to it. Take all the wrapping paper off there. Oh, and she's got a rangefinder as well. I gotta dig that out of the box. But this is what the helmet looks like on its own without the rangefinder. With that night owl signet that was a feature, a factor in this last week's episode of The Mandalorian. If you haven't seen it yet, you should check that out because... Bo-Katan is a big part of this season of The Mandalorian. She's been in every episode so far. I'm going to find that rangefinder. Okay, so here's the Bo-Katan helmet. Here's the rangefinder. And it's just going to plug right in like that. There we go. And the rangefinder comes down over her right eye. Goes back up like that. Let's see, how do you make it lower? I guess it's just a uh, manual. We'll figure out all the noises and everything in a second. I just want to look inside the helmet. A lot of detailing on the inside of the helmet. I'm going to try and see if this fits on my head. I've got good news. It fits on my head, so I'll show it off in a second. Um, but let's see if I can figure out how the sounds work by reading the instructions. There's a... Uh, a better look at what the inside looks like and all the details that Hasbro has put in here. You know, it's not just blank on the inside. So many cool things. Little doodads and uh, greebling, as they call it, going on inside there. 
Let's uh, let's figure out how to make this make noise. Okay, I've got the batteries in the Boca Tan Kreese helmet from the Black Series from Hasbro, and I was wrong. It does not make noise, but it does do something cooler than that. Uh, if you're wearing the helmet, or if you're not wearing the helmet, you just press this button here, and the rangefinder comes down. You've got these blinking LEDs, and on the other side, you can see that the rangefinder actually lights up in there. So you can see out through the visor into the rangefinder. You know, you're not actually looking uh, at anything in particular, but it is a cool kind of play feature. Then you kind of manually have to just put it back in position like that. I love this helmet. It's got a lot of cool detail. I always love the weathered look of Star Wars designs like this. This goes back to Boba Fett's helmet in The Empire Strikes Back. Of course, how it was all beat up and weathered and worn and lived in looking. And that's definitely what the design of this helmet is intended to show and what Hasbro has so successfully recreated in their Black Series version. Um, yeah, this is definitely one of the cooler Star Wars helmets that I have owned. Not that I have very many of them, and it's just pretty sweet to have it. Uh, I'm going to put it on <laughs> so you can see what it looks like on me. Like I said, it's not really intended for me, but you know what? I'll say it's intended for everybody because... Star Wars is for everybody, right? So that's me in the Boca Tan Kreese Black Series helmet. Rangefinder down. Rangefinder back up. Oh, now I'm out of the I'm out of the children of the watch because I removed my helmet. Katie Sackhoff is a much better Bo-Katan than I will ever be, but very, very cool helmet from Hasbro, and that's going to look great on my shelf. I think next, I'm going to clear some space and dive into this Navarro Cantina playset, because I'm super excited about that. Okay, I kind of reorganized a bit here. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Navarro Cantina playset from Hasbro. It's got the Kenner, the old Kenner logo label on it to make us feel like it's a sort of a, it's in the vintage collection, which makes sense because it's intended to feel like the old school style of Star Wars action figures and toys from the late 70s and early 80s. So I'm gonna pull out this interior box here and First, we'll take a look at the Imperial Death Trooper carded. Imperial Death Trooper, parentheses, Navarro action figure. It's got four, sorry, it's got eight additional figures on the back. There's a Death Trooper. That's the one we've got. Khalil, the Ugnaught Bib Fortuna from Jabba's Palace. The Mithril from The Mandalorian. IG-11 from The Mandalorian. Rebel Soldier from the Echo Base Battle Gear. He's got Echo Base Battle Gear from uh, The Empire Strikes Back. And Bo-Katan Kreese from The Mandalorian and other stuff. And Lobot from Empire. That's the back of the Death, Tro Death Trooper. We can open him up. I know it's it's uh, it's going to hurt people. It hurts me a little bit sometimes to open up these packages. But he's not going to remain in the package. Because this is a cool figure. And he's got a... He's got to occupy that environment of the Navarro Cantina when we get that set up. So uh, he's going to hold his blaster rifle and he's got a little blaster pistol as well. So there we go. There's the vintage collection, three and three quarter inch scale Death Trooper. Let's stand him up back here for now and then I'll start opening up everything else that's in here. Let's see, what's this? This looks like part, maybe the front of the bar. This is gonna be, oh, the door to the canteen. It's got a little cardboard door that, oh, well, doesn't quite slide out of the way, but you can remove it um, from its little holder there. So that's cool. 
down there for now. This piece is part of the wall. And there's a whole bunch of knickknacks and doodads. Uh, I probably shouldn't have just poured those out there, but uh, that's my mistake. Because those are going to go on the bar, and we can get that together. Hmm, I don't see. Okay, I had this upside down. That's the top of the bar. There we go. So I had flipped that over. But yeah, this is the bar. This is the back wall of the bar. And let's see, this is going to be. I probably should be reading the instructions. Let's see. So, okay. Um, so there's different iterations of how you can set this up. There, You can have the door on the right, you can have the door on the left, and you can have this wall support at different points. I'm going to make it look like it does on the show with the door on the left. I think that makes the most sense. So um, this is going to plug in right here. So that sticks in to the side and then the door oops, goes right here that's pretty much all there is to it uh, as far as the main setup goes then we've got all these little knickknacks that are intended to sit on the bar so I'm gonna start setting those up okay I've got the Navarro Cantina Place set set up much like you see it on the box there although I have the door and the support in a different place because I wanted them to be uh, more close to where they are in the show because the I'm pretty sure in the series the door is on the left of the bar and then the archway leading to the rest of the seating area is over on the right but uh, I like the detail here boy a lot of cool little parts that come with this. There's even these tiny, tiny little shot glasses that are going to be so easy for me to lose. I lose stuff so easily. I got to try and keep track of those, but I love all the, all the bottles of different like Star Wars-y type drinks on the bar here in multi-colors. Then there's these weird orb, you know, uh, bowls that some of them are, are even supposed to be broken uh, in these racks that were very small and detailed um, and kind of fun to put together too. There's two stools included for the bar, which is neat, two Star Wars stools. And I think the window here is supposed to be shot out after Moff Gideon's troops outside have shot out the windows when um, they kill Werner Herzog's character, the client. So let's, uh, let's get the Death Trooper out here and put him next to the bar so you can see what it looks like when a uh, three and three quarter inch scale figure is standing there in front of the bar. We, al we also got the Paz Vizsla figure. I forgot to point out earlier that he comes with a little vibro blade that we've seen him use in the show. So you can see I put it there in his left hand, the little vibro blade knife that we've seen uh, Paz Vizsla wield on the show. Now these are both larger characters in the series The Mandalorian, so they're a little bit taller than your average three and three quarter inch scale Star Wars figure. So you figure, you figure most uh, figures are gonna come up to maybe their shoulders a little bit higher, but um, this does give you an idea of what it looks like when the three and three quarter inch figures are posed by the Navarro Cantina playset. I think it's really cool. I love playsets personally. I'm actually a bigger fan of playsets in action figures than I am with vehicles or starships or anything like that. Um, but here's what it looks like on the back. So it's not really intended to be seen from this side. I just wanted to give you an idea of what it looks like from the rear. This is not how you would want to display it, but that's what it looks like. And then I'll I want to show you the door, which is made of cardboard, and you can remove it. It doesn't slide aside or slide up or anything like that, like you would 
see in the show, but it is removable. There's a little latch here that holds it in place and it just kind of slides oops, slides in like that and the latch will hold it and it looks neat it looks cool from the front like that but it doesn't have the sliding action that you would see in the Star Wars entertainment as Hasbro will call it uh, but yeah there you go that's the Navarro Cantina playset. I love it. I gotta find a place on the shelf for this and populate it with the rest of the characters because I have some Mandalorian three and three quarter inch uh, figures that I bought that are still in the package that uh, I gotta open up and put in the bar. I don't think they've made the Werner Herzog figure, the client figure in three and three quarter inch, but now I hope that they do so I can put them in the cantina here because it's Pretty neat from season one of The Mandalorian. Let's move on to our final item from this box. And that last item to which I am referring is the Star Wars, the Black Series, Dark Saber. I'm very, very excited about this. Let me open it up and we'll take a look. Okay, I've got the box open. I'm gonna slide out the Dark Saber here. Already dropping pieces. So what I had dropped was part of the display stand, but this is what the packaging looks like on the inside. The first thing that I see here is the blade. I'm gonna cut this out. Okay, there's the blade for the dark saber. without the hilt. And here is the display stand, which looks like the other Force Effects Elite display stands I've seen, and I have. And then we've got the hilt itself, so let me cut this out of here. Okay, there is the hilt of the dark saber. Oh, it's already lit up. Look at that. Why is that? So I think we might need to remove part of the hilt to plug in the blade. That's interesting. Let me figure that out. Okay, I've got the blade here installed in the dark saber. There's a couple really interesting things about this. The first one is that it's rechargeable. So you don't need to buy batteries or install batteries from the store, but you do need to use the Allen wrench that was included in the dark saber box to unscrew down here, this Allen screw, this comes out, the base comes out and it plugs in to a USB charger thanks to the included cord, which I have not used because it came with a charge already installed. So the other interesting thing is to get the blade off, it doesn't just pop in and out. You have to use the Allen wrench again to unscrew another screw on the hilt right here. Uh, this part of the hilt comes off, then you remove this, which is the emitter, the display emitter that you would have uh, when you have the blade on display or when you just want to carry around the hilt by itself without the blade. Uh, so this comes off, then you slide this part of the hilt all the way down the length of the blade after you've put the blade onto the hilt and screw in the screw again. So it is a little bit of a process to get it in there, but the great news is that once you've done that, the effect is pretty cool. I'm going to turn off the lights here and ignite the dark saber for you. Here we go. I just love how smooth that motion is. The ignition motion. It doesn't go in segments. You know, I've seen other lightsabers that do that. I won't name which ones, but this one. So this button here on the hilt, you probably can't see it because it's dark, ignites the lightsaber. Oh wow, just love the way that looks. I love the sound. 
the Force Effects Elite uh, sounds. There's also a second button above the power button that will cause blaster deflection lights and noises. So I'll show you that. And then if you hold that second button down, you get the effect of cutting through a door or a wall. And it makes kind of a rainbow effect on the edge, the tip of the blade here. So those are the very cool lights and sound effects of the, the Force Effects Elite Darksaber from Hasbro. Now to turn off the lightsaber, you just hold down that first rectangular button and it turns off like that. Let me turn the lights back on and we'll take a look at the hilt again. All right, here's the hilt. Yeah, very detailed on here. I think it does look like, obviously, the lightsaber on the show. Uh, I do have a couple other dark sabers, so I don't have the Galaxy's Edge one. I haven't bought that, but I do have uh, the the toy version, the kind of mid-range toy version that Hasbro made that they send to me, and I also have the uh, lightsaber forge, which is the the low end, the, the kids version, ages four and up version of the dark saber. But of the ones that I have, this is obviously definitely my favorite. It's very, very cool. I could see it working perfectly for a Mandalorian cosplay or even a, a Moff Gideon cosplay or a Bo-Katan Kreese or a Sabine Wren cosplay. Boy, you really can't go wrong with this Force Effects Elite lightsaber, dark saber actually, from Hasbro. And then I just went ahead and removed the blade again. So you unscrew the Allen screw there. You take off this part of the hilt. You slide it up over the entire length of the blade. You put in the display emitter and then you put this part of the hilt, this black uh, emitter piece here. On and you rescrew the Allen screw. It is a little bit of a process, but it definitely looks cool in the end. Here's the separate blade, and then the display stand here can hold the dark saber like that. And it's gonna look very cool just sitting on the shelf without the blade in it. And I believe I believe it'd hold it with the blade as well. I'm not 100 percent on that but that's how it looks on the display stand and uh, this is everything that came in that Mando Mania box from Hasbro a bunch of really cool stuff again this year uh, so thank you so much to Hasbro for sending it over very very happy to check it out and uh, it's all available at HasbroPulse.com we've got information on it at LaughingPlace.com as well my name is Mike Celestino thanks very much for watching, and uh, see you real soon. May the force be with you. Bye. Bye.